The lightning testimonies uh, in a sense began uh, for me several years ago uh, uh, more uh, because of a set of massacres and attacks that took place in Gujarat in 19, uh, in, in 2002 and uh, it, it seemed to be like a subject that or an issue that uh, everybody knows uh, but one would rather not get into. And uh, I just, I felt that I needed to understand it. I needed to find a way to talk about it. And the more I tried to understand it, the more I realized that uh, not only was it difficult to talk about it, which I knew, but uh, also the fact that, you know, different people, different individuals, different communities, they, they archive differently. And, and they recall differently, and they tell stories differently, they, they hide stories differently. And um, sometimes, um, you know, it may be in a mark, in a, in a drawing, in a song, in a sound, in a word, in a tree, in a stone. I mean, it, it, the, the, the narrative, uh, you know, seems to disappear and then exist in, in other vocabularies. And so, in a way, what I did was that I tried to look at the uh, South Asia and the subcontinent and look at the history and the politics of the subcontinent but not necessarily in a conventional way but actually to try and re-look at history and time uh, but only through in a sense the lens of uh, looking at sexual violence and looking at the narrative of sexual violence and trying to see if uh, at first it's, it, was, it, it, it was like uh, like it seems like it's about suffering uh, but then eventually it's about seeing how to go beyond suffering and that's what it was. Uh, so you, you actually look at and go through many parts of, this, of the subcontinent over maybe about 60 years uh, looking at the narratives of sexual violence in public political conflicts and uh, looking at it in, with different eyes, with different uh, words, with different vocabularies, textures and so on. This work is called Ghost Trans Memoir. When I say Trans Memoir, it is about memory of the city, memory of the place where I live. I live in Bombay. Uh, it is about Bombay, the story about Bombay. It's a, a short documentary on Bombay. It runs through the... I have picked up uh, Tiffin Carrier as a kind of icon. Um, the belly of this Tiffin Carrier, I open it up and uh, the film running through this belly. So it's basically about the survival of the city and how people live there. The questions were very casual, like where they come from, what are they doing in the city, what is, you know. Uh, so it's basically about the hedonism and low life of Mumbai. It's almost like maybe a slum, slum dog millionaire. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the same thing, you know, it coexists in Mumbai. Uh, the rich and the poor. We had some sort of idea of creating this creature, uh, but we kind of started working on it in India about four years ago, off and on, and we didn't know what kind of form it should take. So initially we were toying with the idea and we thought, okay, we'll make a film with this thing being a prop or we'll make some kind of software simulation or a software, viral software. And then finally it found its form as a physical thing because it's very present when you have a physical thing and we wanted people to react to it or give it a lifelike feeling which is most lifelike when it's physical and when not when it's on a website or on a movie or something. So that's how we started kind of developing it over the last few years. And uh, then we had an opportunity of exhibiting it in a space and we wanted to use the whole space and we wanted to have this feeling that you're surrounded by these creatures and we also wanted to create a feeling of it being camouflaged in the environment so that's why we thought of these panels I mean it wasn't actually a reference to anything but we just thought of uh, having these panels which would almost kind of camouflage with a wall or appear to be a, another wall and we wanted to have this, these creatures that we call pygmies hide behind them and they are kind of, uh, kind of shy creatures but they also have curious behaviours. So they kind of shy away from loud sounds 
and uh, so they hide behind these things and then they kind of creep out and we, we worked very hard to you know it, it's a very simple thing that they do it just comes up and it goes back down but we really spent a lot of time in creating a lifelike feeling in that movement the idea again of 8 by 6 is very much specific to the kind of spaces people live in in the slums um, 8 by 12 is a very lavish space that I've given because I wanted people to enter the space and feel, imagine you having your toilet, kitchen, living room, bedroom, everything in this much space. So the idea of suffocation again and the idea of suffocation vis-a-vis the city's attitude, vis-a-vis where these slums are and what makes these slums. So the idea of claustrophobia and you know like when, when uh, people, uh, people say, oh, he's a schizophrenic or you know there's it's so suffocating how do you generate these ideas as a visual artist so for me all those concerns come from the material and the concept and hence you kind of the title itself is a lot of people were like why are you calling it 8 by 12 I said because if I title it something very poetic the whole meaning of that suffocation just goes you know so for people to enter this space to experience the landscape and then go out and imagine that there is someone somewhere living in this much space I've been working with toys for a long period of time. And this particular work of mine is, uh, is more to deal with uh, this notion of melting them, melting them to a point or torturing them to a point of, uh, that, that they become very fleshy and, uh, and then, then screwing them again, so the more brutality, and then hanging them, and so there is more brutality. And to coming up to a point where there is no uh, brutality in it, it just becomes an art object. It just becomes a very um, desirable, uh, very fleshy, sugary sort of object uh, to be. So, in a way, also uh, it talks about the situation from where I come from. Uh, as you, if you look at uh, India, or if you look at Sri Lanka, or if you look at Pakistan, or close but neighboring Afghanistan, there is constant fear, or, or there is a constant. Uh, alarms uh, of, of more danger, more danger, to come coming up to uh, end result where it, uh, everybody has started taking it more as a joke rather than, than really fearing about it. I think the idea of the performance, or I think any kind of performance that happens in a public space, is to make people pause. Uh, is to distract them from their regular sort of route to work or the shopping mall or the grocery store. And it's asking them to hold on, wait, stop, look. You know, and, uh, and hopefully I can do this in Oslo. Uh, for, me it's, for me, actually, it's very important with, with the work that I, I have brought here is that it's not just an installation that it's 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 an installation that grows and metamorphosizes because this is a traveling exhibition I was really interested in this idea of uh, the traveling artist as well with the traveling exhibit um, which is why I think it's important for me to contextualize all of this stuff in Oslo so I want to locate myself here and the way to do that for me is to get out onto the street and plant myself at a very kind of like emblematic place in the city and uh, make a drawing um, of the city.